Welcome back to the AgriLand live stream and we're joined now by Noel Dunn, Machinery Editor of Irish Farmers Monthly and uh, Noel is also heavily involved here down at the NPA site and also Jim Breen has joined us again, the Editor of AgriLand. Uh, thank you both very much. We're delighted to be here again, absolutely. Uh, so Noel, it's day two. Can you give us an update on how the day is, is rolling out so far? Well, it's rolling out so far very, very well, actually. Our traffic plan is starting to move into, uh, into, into should I say, starting to move now, okay? We have busy days coming in, but they're all starting to get in on site now, so we're expecting a very busy afternoon. We had record crowds of 102,500 yesterday came to the gates. We're expecting a lot more today. Of course, today is the day that all the schools come out as well, uh, transition your students. So a lot of people rolling in. Just looking out here, it was a bit slow coming through, but they're getting in now, so everything's going, going quite well. And conditions out there, the weather has been absolutely, absolutely fabulous. Absolutely fantastic. Listen, do you know what? I can tell you why. There's more people going around licking ice cream and putting on sun cream. This time last year, we were flooded out of it, right? It was, you couldn't even use a umbrella last year. The wind was that strong. This year, it's just basically, the way I describe it, right, is like Tramore in the Midlands today. It's absolutely fantastic and people are loving it. And there's lots to see. And what about uh, some special guests who are around today? Who's, who's out there? Who do, who do we need to keep an eye out well, for? Well, we have. I just uh, come from Claude McKenna, where well, celebrity chef is down there on the NDC stand. She's doing a bit of stuff down there, right? We're expecting a couple of politicians. We don't know who yet. Minister Creed could be popping through, and hopefully, maybe uh, at this point in time. We have, a, we have a, an absolute platter of, should I say, musicians from all sides, uh, country music guys moving around. And, then, and you just don't know who you bump into here. A lot of guys in RTE. I see there, um, uh, should I say, some household names are, are moving around. So if you're down and you want to call into the RTE stand, you can see what's happening down there. But there's a lot of celebrities. Uh, as the saying goes, you wouldn't know who you bump into. Good stuff, Noel. And uh, Jim, you've been out around the site again today. What's caught your eye? Well, I'll tell you, the sun caught my head, Claire, for starters anyway. I can <laughs> testify to the good weather conditions out there. So uh, my problem this year is getting burnt. Last year was getting blown away, so it's a fantastic show this year. I can testify to the big crowds as well, as Noel said, over 102,000 yesterday. So it's a phenomenal outturn. And you can see it again today, like it's getting really busy out there on the trackway. And look, there's a load going on. I saw the country music singers as well. Mike Denver was in yep. the RT stand yesterday. I thought he was singing at me. I was getting paranoid, but you're looking, it wasn't me, it was somebody else. And Marty <laughs> Moon as well, especially for Jim. Marty hit the Moan. diff. Yeah, hit the diff and slip the clutch at all the classics. Good. And speaking of hit the touch, Jim was just saying to me, we were following the Russian tractor about hitting diffs and stuff like that, wasn't it, Jimmy? That's right. I'll tell you, the Russian, the now famous yeah. Russian tractor, Claire, it's down in the machinery demonstration area and it's having a go now at pulling one of the biggest implements in the country, a 10 metre wide Pottinger disc carrow now. Now, we did see it actually tugging the machine along. I'm not sure now if it's a long term marriage made in heaven, but I think it'll survive maybe for two or three days the way it's going. Well, it was a little thing, Claire, about like it was, um, should I say, east met west, right? So there was a lot of dust happening, it was easy conditions. But Jim is kind of saying to me, he said, Noel, we'll go down tomorrow and see what's really happening if, you know... Uh Absolutely, Will and, and I'll tell you, look at no, and it's great to see. So, look, the Russians have arrived. Oh, yeah, there's the a Russians Turkish arrived. tractor here as well. So, there's an Eastern Bloc feel, there's a Middle Eastern feel about the plough and match this year in the machinery stands, you know, and it is that bit exotic and it's adding something to the mix. And on a genuine note, look, it is encouraging to see brands coming in who haven't been in Ireland before, so like Bassac Tractor, first time in the country, never exhibited at the ploughing before, and it's interesting that they would have picked the ploughing match as the launch point for the tractors. And actually, not just the launch point in Ireland, but across Western Europe for that new model. So that's really encouraging to see. It's really what they're using, going back to yesterday, about being the biggest outdoor event in Europe. Uh, like a manufacturer's uh, treat this is very, very important. Like, I mean, just going back to the guy winning the award yesterday, like, you know, he won the award, right? Uh, at the biggest outdoor event in Europe and that carries a lot of weight from media following them as well. Uh, another thing just to watch out for, I was just down a couple of stands chatting to some manufacturers, there's a phenomenal buzz out there, the weather is making people happy, you know what I mean? So you're, they're coming out of the stands, they're, they're making genuine inquiries, so the weather is, 
is 95% of the factor here today, you know, and people are good. And oh, yeah. Noel, what about the ploughing that's happening out there at the moment? How's it going? How are the competitions? Right? Yes, competition, excellent and ideal ploughing competitions. Um, there's a lot happening in the different classes today now, day two. It's starting to get serious now, you know. The preliminaries over yesterday, this is day two. The competition really starting to get in earnest. Guys qualifying and girls qualifying to get through. A couple of classes which needs to be sorted out today. But the, com the, the competition uh, got a couple of plough uh, men and women in yesterday and they're saying ideal conditions maybe it's maybe a tad of the dry side right but I can guarantee you one thing going back to it as I was saying there yesterday get out of the plots a lot of competition really going to start racking up within the next couple of hours the people to qualify for tomorrow I, I've so, seen that Claire yeah and look at our own Siobhan Walsh is out on the ploughing plots but look the sod is turning over lovely great soil conditions I'd say the only risk this year now is that Russian tractor breaking loose with giant disc carrow and destroying all the competition plots plough the whole lot <laughs> up plough the whole lot up yeah. turn the stubble back up you see everybody you see Jim, Jim, Jim isn't fascinated by this Russian tractor I think he's going to buy one but just going back to other brands out there like I mean uh, you know you have all major manufacturers represented out there and a lot, a lot of new launches but one of the areas I want to go back to is the innovation centre there's things happening there every day and the awards have started being handed out yesterday and today as well right and some of the overall winners will be announced tomorrow but if, if, you're, if you're coming to the ploughing I just recommend you go to the innovation arena because that is the birthing ground for the next McHale for the next for the next Malone for the next major company basically that's where it's happening and it's just the amount of uh, of tech stuff which is there which is the whole changing in farming is down there as well and it's really yeah. worth getting and it's, it's amazing yeah. Yeah. Ireland Ireland Clare is a real hotbed when it comes to innovation and engineering yeah. expertise and it's amazing actually in particular Northern Ireland is a massive test bed for like development and innovation and I'll tell you, it all goes back to actually, would you believe, like the Harland and Wolf days and the Titanic days. And when all those shipyards closed, there was 15,000 welders, fabricators, people with engineering skills spread out across the whole of Northern Ireland. Some of them would across the border down into the Republic. That's where all that legacy of engineering comes from. And you can see a lot of that even here today, like decades, decades on, almost a century on at this stage. And that's where it all started. You know, the whole legacy in Ireland and especially Northern Ireland. But that's what you see. And it's here today. Mm -hmm. As Jim was saying, one of the things which we take away from this thing is the quality build. There's a quality build in Irish machinery. Irish machinery has a worldwide reputation for its build quality. And the, the, there's the great line always said that, I mean, if it, work, if it works in Ireland, it'll work anywhere. For a very simple reason. We have got, you know, heavier crops so hev and heavier soils. So at the end of the day, Basically, if you buy an Irish product, it's really well put together because we've great engineers, great backup, great support. And as Jim quite yeah, rightly said, yeah. you know what I mean. Some big man, big, big say Harlem was particularly. Yeah. You go to Northern Ireland, you go to say the west of Ireland, right? You go down to say in Carlow here was what was the hub of manufacturing. All beat the fact of the matter that there was heavy engineering companies working in these areas and when those engineers closed down or moved on, it left this wonderful educated bunch of quality welders and fabricators and that's where your machinery industry start to fuse. What about sales then on the machinery side? Are many people buying here or eyeing up to, to buy in the future? Is there is there much um, dealing and dealing going on yeah, out there? I mean, I, like I would say like with the plowing match, when it comes to bigger machines, you know, like maybe the days of just like a fresh inquiry coming onto the stand, you know, and doing the deal within the plowing match, like it's not so much about that anymore. Like those are deals that are in gestation for months and months on the bigger machines. I think for the big brands, for the big machinery companies, it's very much an exercise about brand awareness yeah. and showing the strength of the brand, you know, and I think maybe people who are on a deal to buy a big machine would have been on that deal maybe previously, but it's very important. And even you can see it with companies like Farmhand who represent Crown and Amazon, and it's very much an exercise in strengthening the brand. And that's why when you see everybody's coming to the plowing match will have seen the big M, 450 and now famous more up on a height you know and it, rather than bringing maybe like a whole clatter of machines from the range it's putting that flagship machine up front and center and then promoting the brand and creating that impression that the brand is really an integral part of like Irish farming Irish contracting it's all about brand awareness there but is the spend out there, I suppose, is, it, is, the, is the boom back on that side of things in terms of... Well, I'll tell you, just to come in on that, yeah, like new tractor sales. Now, new tractor sales, you know, would have been high up to, like, you know, the Celtic Tiger years and then fell off a little bit of a cliff. But there's been a steady recovery, and there is a hope now. There was a little bit of dip in new tractor sales last month, probably, you know, due to some of the negativity that's in the industry at the moment. But there is a hope that new tractor sales can get up above the 2,000 mark threshold this year, which would be the first time in almost a decade 
decade that that's happened. So the FTMTA, the Farm Machinery Trade Association, are hopeful that they'll pass that threshold come the end of the year, come the 31st of December. So like, when you look at it in a, in a, in a yearly total sense, it is actually looking reasonably positive. It's coming across on that, Claire, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well just finally, Noel, I suppose, uh, what's coming up tomorrow that people uh, should know now when they're making, and what advice would you give them on their journey getting here? Traffic okay, first of all, what I'd like to say is you get up early and come early, right? Tomorrow's going to be a big day, the last day, and the, the weather's bringing out a lot of people. But there's a lot happening on the bandstands, there's some entertainment on that. Also, once again, there's a lot happening out in the ploughing fields. Um, yeah, the, we, we just have, say, like the brown bread baking competition. There's a lot happening, Aldi and Little, lots to see there, and National Dairy Council, get to Glombia, they've all had having little pockets of entertainment going on there. Uh, basically, come out, enjoy, come out early, turn off your sat-nav once again, be guided by the guards and the police that are out there, should I say, and people are out in the field working, right? They're there to get new parking, because, I mean, you know, the one thing about this year's ploughing, right, we're getting bigger crowds every day, and this is going to bring out more people. There's a lot to see here. There's a big event, and just going back to the machinery uh, point of view is, a couple of people that we're talking to today is that the level of inquiry, Jim, mm. from the machinery point of view, like uh, mowers, balers, tellers, rakes, stuff like that, there's a steady line of inquiry on the backdrop of all the issues we're having at the moment. So people are actually positive. So, like, I mean, get down to the ploughing, get enjoying it, and get to see the spectacle. And right. I'd say, now, and once you make it to the site, I would just say the hub of all the activities here on site is the NPA site and across the road, the Agriland stand. So I would say, look, at once you come on site, make your way to that hub and then get your bearings and then decide where you want to go from there. Great, that's Jim. the best advice. Yeah, that's the best advice. We'll have you back on, Jim, to, to make that clear yet again. Thank you both very much for joining like us it. and hopefully you'll be back tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, so we'll see what's going on now around the site.